This is a story about ordinary people who see and feel things the rest of us don't. They have a rare brain condition called synesthesia in which some of the senses, usually quite distinct, involuntarily fuse together, creating almost literally a sixth sense. Music is not only heard, it's seen and felt. Words can have flavors, and flavors can have color. It sounds bizarre, but it's more common than many people realize. Synesthesia means joined or coupled sensations, so that my voice, for example, is not only something that they hear, but something that they may see or taste or feel as a physical touch. David Eagleman from the Department of Neurobiology and Anatomy at the University of Texas in Houston has been studying synesthesia for two years. Synesthesia is a harmless perceptual condition in which there's a blending of the senses. So for example, one might experience colors while listening to music. So one can think about this mixture of the senses like neighboring countries on the brain's map where there's porous borders in between the countries. There are essentially two theories about what's happening in the synesthetic brain. So in one theory, you have increased wiring between neighboring brain areas, and that causes them to talk to each other more. In the second theory, which I favor, that wiring is already there in everybody. But in the normal brain, there's a balance of inhibition and excitation that keeps these areas from talking to each other. And it appears that what happens in the synesthetic brain is that that inhibition is not working, so the wiring is actually talking. Imagine a world where the sound of music made you see colors. Where the note of B is sparkling silver. Where the taste of food has a distinctive shape. Oh, too round. Don't get roasted. The sound of words can literally leave a bad taste. Oh. And thinking of days of the week or months of the year generates an Alice in Wonderland three-dimensional calendar in space. It's like walking along on a little track. It may sound a bit strange, but this is the world according to people with synesthesia where one sense, sight, taste, hearing, touch, or smell, gets jumbled with another. Perceiving the days of the week as colored is the most common type. And then seeing letters and numbers as colored is the next most common. And then we have colored hearing, which is the coupling of sight with sound. So that music, voice, environmental sounds, like barking dogs or slamming doors, will cause people to see what are called photisms that look a little bit like fireworks. Experts believe there are more than 20 different types of synesthesia, but around half of all synesthetes have more than one type. Like Sean, who can see music as colors, but also taste food as color. One of the first times he experienced his particular food synesthesia was in his teens, when he drank a cup of coffee. I took one sip and all of a sudden, wow. It's like right there in front of me, this very vivid, huge, pool of oily green and it just struck me as like, that's interesting I'm gonna have to start experimenting with this. Synesthesia isn't just people getting a bit poetic about their world their brains are wired differently. Well they have what I call a different texture of reality. But how do we know that they're not making this up? Well, first of all, it's been known to medicine and psychology for 300 years. This is an experience that happens to people. They don't do anything about it. Um, the doorbell rings, they see, you know, blue round spots. And it's as real to them as... As seeing the sky is to us. It's just that their reality is different than what we perceive. And it's interesting that synesthetes say that they see odd or ugly or weird colors that they normally wouldn't pick deliberately. I mean, this is an involuntary phenomenon. It's estimated that synesthesia affects 1% of the world's population. There are a lot of people who have synesthesia. Um, and a lot of people don't know the world without synesthesia, so don't realize that there are other people who don't have synesthesia. So a lot of, you know, most people don't even talk about it that have it. And those that think about it, and realize that other people don't have it, think that they must be abnormal. So a lot of people avoid mentioning that they have it because no one else knows, of course. One in 90 people will have uh, colored letters and numbers, and one in 23 people will have uh, some kind of synesthesia. And if you have one kind of synesthesia, you've got a 50% chance of having a second or a third kind. So the gene 
for synesthesia is expressed in multiple areas of the brain. We've known for a long time that synesthesia is more common in artists and creative people such as artists, um, composers, etc. And what these people all have in common is an ability to make metaphors, that is to see the similar in the dissimilar. And that's really the definition of synesthesia because if a sound is white, for example, that's an identity between two senses. The association between synesthesia and elevated memory is quite strong. In fact, many people have what is called eidetic memory, or which is popularly known as a photographic memory, so that if they read a book, they can tell you what page it's on, where on the page it was, where the book is located on the shelf, what color the cover was, etc. On hearing it, you get this overwhelming sense of blue. So the set is entirely blue, which is, but not just any blue. And here, Synesthetes are, are so particular about the exact shade or touch or taste that something is. And he said, it reminded me of that antique Victorian blue china. And so he went to the Victorian Albert and photographed 150 pieces. And, and so the, he has that china blue all throughout uh, that opera. Can you see the pattern? For me, I see the fives, the twos look almost like the fives. It took me about 15 seconds to find the shape hidden on this page of numbers. But this group of synesthetes who we put to the same test were much quicker. Can any or all of you tell me where the twos are and what the pattern is? It took them less than half the time. Diamond. Diamond. And for you, Laura, why was it so immediate? The twos are orange and the fives are red. My fives are red and the twos are yellow. They find it so quickly because Laura Rosser and sisters Evan Lynn and Krista Kostenko see more than just black letters. Since they were children, they've had crosstalk going on in their brains, where every letter is associated with a distinct color, and that color never changes. Once synesthetic associations are established in childhood, the links stay fixed for life. So they can't really control it, it's just there? Or it's it something isn't. that happens to you. You don't do anything to make it happen. One thing that you have to realize is that you don't get to pick the color to whatever combination. So, for example, I might really like the sound of a certain instrument, but might really hate the color. For me, French horns. If a French horn is playing with any other instrument, its color doesn't go with anything else, and it's really disturbing in a symphony or something like that for the French horn to all of a sudden come in. It shows you that your senses really are nothing more than, you know, how your body's interpreting reality and how you are interpreting reality. And, you know, it taught me that reality is such an illusion because if they could change places that easily you know if I could see what I hear and I could hear what I see that easily then you know what is it anyway that I'm really seeing or hearing you know what is this reality anyway but illusion I see it as a gift uh, as a sort of spiritual God thing that enables more intuition. It really is an added dimension to what I do.